Assalamu alaikum. I hope you can see me. Um, it's been a while since I did a video, but I really felt like I wanted to do it um, because of a post that I found by Brother Shamsi from Dus Dawa, the US Dawa, uh, in um, on Facebook. So I actually prepared uh, like some notes which I wanted to follow to share with you respectfully but i think that this is worth discussing at this point so let me actually move this here okay so i recently came across a post by brother shamsi from the us dawa which you all might know where he claimed that the earth rotates around the sun and i really wanted to address that now of course let me begin by saying that i respect immensely the work of Shamsi and other da'is online and they are, and and that they have been doing um, throughout the years and this is by no means a personal attack this is not a personal attack rather it is an advice so what happens as i said is that Shamsi attacked on facebook in a post of about 15 hours ago it goes back to 15 hours ago or so saying that those who believe uh, scientists and do not believe the scholars in the fact that the earth rotates around the sun you know and then uh, um, they are in, in wrong because what is true is that you know anyone he says who looks who reads the quran and so on notices that heliocentrism is true which means that the, the earth rotates around the sun and not uh, so the the sun rotates around the earth and not vice versa so the problem is that, and, and this I believe is quite dangerous, but let's see why. The problem is that in 1400, 1400 yeah, years of history of Islam, we, saw, we scarcely see this, this claim, you know. Did someone claim it? Yes. But is it the majority opinion? No. So there are a number of issues here to unpack. First, why did Shamsi feel the need to say this? Second, can the ulama be wrong? And thirdly, what are the dangers of passing this opinion, which I deem, like many, many other ulama, are totally wrong and incorrect? So for the first point, looking at Shamsi's content, I understand that he is very jealous of the scholars. He has ghira of the ulama of Islam, for those, and especially against those who offend them. And he is aware, of course, because of his studies and debates of the limitation of the scientific method like for example the problem of induction and the fact that there are many things that the scientific method cannot prove like axiomatic facts uh, upper truth history and many other things yet this does not mean that the whole method is bad even if some not all scientists corrupt the scientific method in the scientific enterprise with materialism and I repeat, not all, it's just some of them. The method is actually pretty good, you know. And to belie, you know, to say that all the scientists are liars in the world, the whole world, all the scientists in the world, all those who approach, you know, the scientific pursuit of truth when it comes even to this issue of ge geocentrism and heliocentrism, which is, you know, quite, uh, you know, there is a in the, in the in, among the ulama. But again, let's see, let's see, let's continue. Um, well, to, to have this big of a claim from Shamsi requires first an honest study of why the scientists in, as, a, as an ijma'a believe with all the instruments that we have that uh, what, they, what they believe, which is uh, heliocentrism. And I do, do not really believe that Shamsi did that. He never referenced uh, this type of research. And if he did, I really want to see whether he has understanding it, it is important to see what he has understanding because when you look at the books of the ulama you also have to see the claim of the of, 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 of um especially for a scientific fact what is the science saying today and and so on and so forth in fact i think one i remember that one of the criteria for looking for example at the hadith let's say of the prophet okay is that they cannot contradict reality okay because the prophet does not speak a lie you know so yeah, but let's continue. Um, okay, so of course, what I say is that may Allah reward the scholars but for what they do, the ulama, the scholars of Islam, but they can be wrong. And this is one case where the scum of the scholars, which Shamsi follows, and which I'm not going to name them because 
for me, for me, it's out of respect. I, I don't really want to get into the drama and so on. They did a mistake. There is this opinion, and it's minority, minor, mi, 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 a very minority opinion. Well, they did a mistake, even though they have their word with Allah. Second point is that there is no clear cut proof from the Quran and Sunnah. And if there is such a clear cut proof, then it needs to be brought and it needs to be proven that, for example, in some cases, such a thing, I don't know, uh, it needs to be interpreted literally and not, you know, um, maybe metaphorically, maybe spiritually, in the spirit of the Quran and Sunnah, respecting their methodology, not reading into the text. You know, there is exegesis, which is to read out of the text, which is a method which is good, it's doable, but it requires a lot to do it. And then there is the opposite, which is to read into the text, to actually violate the text, to read something into it, which is not there. And I believe that in this case, what Shamsi, well, not Shamsi did, the scholar that Shamsi did, by following this, they did this mistake. They read into the text this sort of opinion, which is not there. Um, as for the second point, can the ulama be wrong? The answer is yes. Uh, everyone agrees, and that is perfectly fine. The ulama are not masumin; they are not uh, infallible like the prophets. They can and they do make mistakes, even big ones. But we still respect them, and for their mistakes, we do not throw away all of their work. But one extreme is not only to delegitimate them completely if they make a mistake, even a big one, but to also elevate them to a level that does not belong to them with a kind of unhealthy sectarianism which is similar to what the Quran says about the Jews that they and, and the Christian that they took their priests and rabbis as lords instead of God now this is an example this is not the case but the tendency is similar as the Quran and Sunnah is being banned to claim um, something which is not at the very conservative list Shamsi should claim that it could be there could be a new strange scientific discovery that could validate the claim of this scholar. This is this can be said. But to claim that anyone, he said anyone who reads the Quran and Sunnah should be able to see this, um, it's 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 a very dangerous claim. And this leads me to the third point of why in fact this is dangerous. Well, it is dangerous simply because if you claim that the Quran and the Sunnah claim this. And you say, everyone who reads the Qur'an Sunnah, you, you say, Yaqra al-Qur'an, he, he took care to write this in Arabic. I, I, I urge him to write them in English as well for this point, you know? Because, you know, people have translated, why do you write it in Arabic and not in English? It doesn't make sense. Maybe you want to reach a certain audience, but you need to make it transparent, you know, if you have such positions. Um, if you claim that Qur'an and Sunnah claim this, then you say that those who, who, who do not, so those who do not read into the Qur'an and Sunnah what the scholar or the scholars that you follow claim, then they are de deviated, they misinterpret the Quran, and this is a very, very dangerous game. You know, if you say that the, anyone who reads the Quran and Sunnah say X, and then there are many Muslims, many ulama who do not agree with you at all, at all, then this leads to a, a, a dangerous game, which, I mean, you you all know what I'm talking about. You know, like sectarianism and, 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 and so on and so forth. Now, I want to end, well, I'm approaching my end, but not yet. So the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, has been and was, I have to say sadly, was the Ummah of science. It was the Ummah, the nation that named so many of the stars that we observe today. Part of what led us to our current status. Okay, it's geopolitical things, there is a spiritual element, but it's also ignorance. And attributing to the scholars authority over a field that, that does not belong to them and that they completely ignore using something, verses which are not at all qata'i from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And and, and, and and this reminds me, in fact, of, of, of those very facts. You know, when you read books of history, you see in the, in the history of Islam, you see that this is what happened, you know, this sort of tendency. And this reminds me of that, so may Allah preserve us from it. So I end by saying that I personally love Islam. You know, and Islam makes me love Islam greatly, and it is Islam that teaches me the method of how to approach this matter. Th this matters, of course. I am not an expert. I'm not an authority. You know, I can only do knuckle, take from the scholars, take from the experts. But it does not mean that we do not, we cannot think. You know, in the day of judgment, we will be responsible of our own opinions and not of how we follow the scholars. So we need to have our own method when approaching these matters. So the the ghira, the positive jealousy and respect of the scholars does not have to become blind following, which leads us to believing blunders, because it is a blunder such as the sun rotating around the earth, so geocentrism. 
if the scholars that Shamsi looked into claim that earth was flat, for example, using some verses from the Quran and Sunnah, then what? Would Shamsi also believe that earth is flat? There are clear scientific miracles miraculous verses in the Quran, like the mountains contributing to earth's stability. It is clearly qata'i sad, um, which some connected to isostasy and so on, but we know that this is true today. Life coming from water, the sexes, the male and the female being determined by the sperm of the man, the sky and the earth being divided into layers, you know, in the earth, and more, more and more, and prophecies and so on. We know that Islam is true. We know that the Quran and the Sunnah have miraculous items. Um, and, and these things are clear-cut. We can observe them today, you know. But for non-clear-cut verses, which in Arabic you, you call them qata'i verses, you cannot claim methodologically this is the, what the Qur'an says. You know, there are some that, for example, say the Qur'an says that... Um, there is the Big Bang and the, and, 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 and the, and the, the, the pulsar is quoted or that uh, the, the universe is expanding. There are verses that could be interpreted to mean that, but you can never say this is what the Quran and Sunnah clearly say, you know? Um, because, well, first of all, it's not clear-cut, and then it, it disrupts the research where research can be done by the ulama, and it polarizes the healthy study of the Quran and Sunnah, and it demonizes those who disagree and those that might be by all means and purposes right while you are not like the many many scholars for example who believe in heliocentrism also using the Quran and Sunnah and I know what some of the verses that Shamsi might quote and they have been refuted as not indicating what, what he indicated one of these verses I mean, it's not even a verse one, one of them is like a, 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 a hadith where the prophet says that the sun goes and prostrates around um, under the throne of Allah and, uh, and, and then it, it comes up again I mean this is spiritual metaphorical language when you look into uh, you know Surah Ar-Rahman it says that the, the, the trees for example and the stars prostrate do you see them doing an extra sujood? no no so maybe, you know, the regularities that this body follows in the cosmos, they lead to, they are considered sujood. Allah says that there is nothing on the, on, on the universe, that do, on the cosmos that doesn't do tasbih of Allah. You know, tasbih for us is when you say subhanallah, this is the literal meaning, you know, but you cannot bring this to an ex extreme and claim that everything literally is saying subhanallah, subhanallah. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, but it is not qata'i. And, and the Quran clearly says everything to us tasbih. But you cannot claim that, you know, this happens in a certain way. And likewise with the sun. And, and the sun prostrates, yes. But the sun prostrates how? Physically, like going directly under the throne of Allah by, tra by traversing the seven heavens and going there? No, of course not. And, and this is not because I say it or because I want to do I want to use my aql and so on. No, no, no. It's because this is the methodology of the ulama. Um, and I I want to end on these notes. I don't I do not think so. This is just going through my notes. I do not think that there is anything more that I should really add. Um, I mean, I think again. I mean, just going back to 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 these points. I think that we should really approach this matter respectfully first of all and when we disagree and that we should not fall into the ex extremes the work that Shamsi and others are doing is very important and letting aside the drama which is something we should be avoiding um, there is good good things there and we all make mistakes Shamsi myself others you know and that have been in the field of Dawah for many years. We're not masumin, we're not perfect, but but we need to have a correct and nuanced methodology. And first of all, and, 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 and first of all, we do not have to read into the text what is not there. We do not need it. We do not need it. You know? If it's there, okay, it's there. We make sense of it. We try to study. We see what other things say. But if it's not there and there are no proof you cannot claim this. And if you really, really want to follow a scholar at that level when you want to claim that the scholar is right, then at the very least you should say, maybe science will prove us that this scholar is correct. But you cannot say that the Quran and the Sunnah say X. This is very, very dangerous. And it contributes to the polarization of the Ummah, which is not something that we need. And I know, well, I know what, what you believe. I know that Shamsi believes that, you know, I, I don't care about polarization, whatever. We care about the truth, the haqq, and so on and so forth. Okay, but still, there are ways and ways of doing that. And this is not the way. So, yeah, as somebody who 
loves Islam has you know certainty that it is the truth Alhamdulillah with all the study and also somebody who loves immensely science the scientific endeavor I just simply love it it is something that the Quran instilled into me to look into the cosmos and to come to the conclusion it is science that led me to believe that la ilaha illallah you know and um, among other things of course but to understand that you, you, we cannot create this split you know and and this is also a food for thought for later it really proves that today scholars well you know sign the critique against for example islam also comes from the scientific field which means that perhaps the the programs of education of scholars should also approach that or you know make sure that at least a part of scholars which want to specialize perhaps on science or whatever Muslim scholars, Islamic scholars, I'm saying, they are aware and conscious of science. They are aware of the scientific method. They are aware of philosophy of science. They are aware of the big scientific discoveries. This is something which is needed today because it is an area which is complex. Okay, usually a scholar specializes on something very specific and they cannot study everything, you know, but at least, you know, this needs to begin. Scholars of Islam also today need to be aware of science because science is the language that modern uh, society speaks science and technology and this is something we need to understand in the light also of islam and islam does give us an instrument but we did not start a pedagogical process towards that so i want to end on this note which is with this intention to study maybe this will inspire some of you and i'm already too old to start to study and to 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 a, a good nuance to study on this either personally or if you want to get into the you know the alim career the, the the scholar the islamic scholar career then to keep this in mind and with this i hope it was beneficial and i salute you with the greetings of islam assalamu alaikum